In this video, we're going to be talking about the four biggest call option buying mistakes that you're probably making as an option trader. Now, if you've been buying call options and you've been finding that your options are expiring worthless or the stock's just not moving in the right direction or it's not moving in the right direction in the time allotted, which is the expiration date, or if you're finding that if you have option profits built up in a position, then all of a sudden you see those profits start to disappear, then you're probably making at least one if not all four of these mistakes as a call option buyer. So if you want to learn what these mistakes are and how to improve them and how to up your option trading game, then you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. So let's go. Now, here at the Smart Option Seller, we help you up your option trading game and take it to the next level. So what we're gonna to do today, as I just talked about, we're gonna be talking about the four biggest option buying mistakes, specifically call option buying mistakes that you're probably making. So here in our cheat sheet that we usually have uh, in each video are the four mistakes that you're probably making. We're gonna take one by one and go over each one and tell you why the mistake is really detrimental to call option buying. So number one, let's just jump right in. Number one is, you got to trade with the trend. If you're a call option buyer, that means you're bullish on the stock. Now, if the stock isn't moving higher, then there's no reason to be buying call options. There's no reason to be, to be bullish on a stock if it's not trading higher. You have to trade with the trend. If the trend is down, why would you want to be bullish? Okay, the, the trend of a, of a stock is very important. We're going to look at some charts here. Let's go to our charts real quick. And we're going to talk about if you're bullish, these are the kind of these are the kind of charts that you want to look at. Now, this is a chart of Pepsi. This is a daily chart of Pepsi. And as you can see, bottom left to top right, this this screen here is about two years worth of trading for Pepsi. This is a daily bar chart of Pepsi. As you can see, over time, the last two years, Pepsi's gone from $144 all the way up to $185. I'll move myself over here a little bit so you can see. So PEP, Pepsi, that's the chart. If you're going to be a buyer of call options, you want to get the trend. The trend is higher for Pepsi, okay? So what you can do is you can see Pepsi goes up and it down and up and down. So what you want to do is try to concentrate on buying call options as Pepsi's on a pullback and starts to move higher. It's very easy to see here the patterns. Look at this. This this is a perfect pattern. Now, Pepsi pulls back, obviously. So you want to wait until the turnaround and then buy as it's moving higher. OK, so if you you know want to look at a chart that's move, you don't want to buy uh, call options on a stock that's moving lower. So let's just look at a different a different uh, a different chart here to see, you know, what you may be doing wrong. Let's look at a chart like um, uh, PayPal. OK, we'll pull up PayPal here and see what it looks like okay so as you can see paypal's been going lower 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 over the last two years so if you're a call option buyer you don't want to be buying call options you don't want to try to catch a falling knife as they say in wall street meaning that you're trying to pick bottoms you're trying to think that eh, this stock's not going to go any lower and you're going to get bullish and you buy call options only to see the stock keep moving lower on you so number one the number one goal when you are bullish and you're buying call options, you want to make sure that you're trading a stock that is uptrending. Or if it's on a pullback, wait until it starts that next move higher. So in the case of PayPal, every time that you might try to think that it's hit a bottom, it's not going to go any lower, it just keeps going lower. Let's go back to Pepsi, okay? This stock is moving higher, all right? So on a pullback, you wait till it makes a bottom. You're not going to catch the very bottom, but at least wait until it's start to move, starting to move higher. Okay. So, and plus you want to, you don't want to listen to people that are just giving you tips. Say, hey, you know, I, I heard the stock's going to be making a move soon. You know, you want to buy some call options. You got to do your own diligence. You got to do your research. You got to make sure you're buying into a quality stock that's been in an uptrend and then buy in the dips. That's that's gonna help your call option, call option buying game tremendously, all right? So let's go back to our list here and look at the second 
uh, item on the list is speculating with OTM, which means out of the money strikes. When you're looking to buy a call option, which strike do you normally choose? A lot of people, I talk to a lot of people, e people email me, I teach a lot of students. The first thing they tell me is that they want to they want to buy the cheapest call option on the board. They don't want to spend a lot of money, so they'll buy the cheapy options. Options that cost 5 or 10 dollars because they think the stock's going to move really big and if the stock moves really big, that cheap call option is going to explode in value and they're going to, you know, make a million dollars. And so if you've been buying call options for a while, you and they've been expiring worthless on you, there's a pretty good chance that you're buying the wrong strike. You're buying these deep out of the money strikes that have absolutely no chance of profiting for you. So let's go to a, uh, let's look at our interactive brokers option chain here for a minute and talk about, you know, what that means buying out of the money options. So here again is our, our interactive brokers option chain. We've got call options on the left here. This is what we're going to, um, focus on and we're, again we're looking at disney we've been following disney in our last couple videos so disney's trading around you know 99 dollars and 40 cents right up here so we're, we're looking at let's just round up to a hundred dollars a share that disney's trading now you want you're bullish on disney and you think it's going to go higher so you want to buy some call options how do you know which strike to choose and, and i just want to say for, for those of you that are just getting into the options game, you know, buying stock is very easy. You buy a stock at its current price and it's either going to go up or down. You know, if you want to get into the options trading game, you need to understand that you're going to be playing with professionals that have a lot more experience than you and really understand what options are doing. When you trade with options, you got to deal with strike prices. You got to deal with expiration dates. You got to deal with volatility levels. There's a lot of things that are much more involved with options trading than just straight up stock trading. So if you want to trade options, you got to really educate yourself on all the all the nuances and characteristics of options so you know how to pick the, you know, the best strike, the best stock the best expiration date, you know, it takes more effort to be um, successful with options trading. So I just want to get that out there. So I'm here to help you, you know, overcome some of those obstacles. Now, we're looking at Disney here. Disney's around, you know, $100 a share. Which call option would you typically choose if you're bullish and you just want to try to make a lot of money? Most people, here's the strike prices here. Most people would go to, you know, this the 140 call option, which costs six cents per contract. Okay, you can see five bid, five cent bid at six cent offer. That means you're going to spend six dollars on one option contract. It'll cost you six dollars to control 100 shares of Disney. Now you have until here's the we're, we're looking at the July options that expire in July 21st, 2023. So between now and July 21st, 90 days in the head. In the future, you think that Disney is going to move from 100 to up to $140 per share if you hold on to the option until expiration, which most people do because they want to hold on to something. They paid for it for three months. You might as well hold on to it for three months. And that's another mistake that we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later on. So between now and July 21st, you think Disney is going to get up and over $140 a year. That's a $40 move that Disney has to make in the next 90 days. And it'll only cost you $6 to make that trade. Now, if you hold this option to expiration, the only way that you'll make money is if Disney moves from 100 to above 140 in the next 90 days. You basically, what you're doing is you're speculating. You think that you know better than the market and you think you know that Disney's gonna make a $40 move in the next 90 days. How do you know that? Why are you buying something with such a small chance of happening? You know, it's like being at the casino and you're just rolling the dice. You're not making a really informed decision. Let's let's go to our probability calculator and um, and talk about the what are the chances of Disney moving that far. So this is the probability calculator that we use. And, it, and it's a tool that helps us understand what are the chances of a stock moving from point A to point B in the time a lot and time allotted. So we're going to choose one hundred dollars. We're going to go 90 days in the future and the future volatility of Disney is roughly 30 percent. So we want to know the chances of Disney going up to one hundred and forty dollars in the next 90 days. We put in all the numbers here. We click go. 
So you can look at these two boxes, bottom right, bottom left. The bottom left here says there's a 98.8% chance that Disney is going to finish below 140. Conversely, you have a 1.19% chance of Disney moving above 140. Do you want to take a trade that only has a 1% chance of profiting for you? I know the option only costs $6, but you do that trade over and over again. You pay $6 here, $6 there. You buy a lot of $6 call options. You're never going to make a profit on them because the stock's never going to move that far. Now, if we go back to our, our uh, option chain here, so what strike should you be concentrating on? You know, which strike would be better for you? Now, there's only one option buying strategy that I recommend, and that's buying deep in the money call options. But in this case, we're going to talk about you want to buy the, the option that is currently at the money, meaning the strike price is close to the current price of the stock. So if this is at, you know, close to $100 a share, you, you want to concentrate on the 100 strike call option. That's called at the money. Now, you can choose any strike you want. In the delta column here, tells you what are the chance of that option or how much that option contract is going to move when the stock moves and what it's basically telling you what are your chances of that stock or that option being in the money at expiration so the at the monies usually have about a 50 delta this one's got a 55 delta and it's cost about six dollars per contract 595 bid 610 offer went out uh, yesterday uh, april 21st 2023. So let's just say you can buy that option for $6. That would be $600 it would cost you with the option multiplier. It's $600 versus the $6 that you want to pay for the 140. So do you want to pay 600 or do you want to pay $6? Now, the chance of Disney moving from its current price of 100 above 100 here is a lot better. Now, you always want to understand what your break-even price is when you buy an option. So you take the strike price, you add the $6 to it, so that's $106. Disney has to move from 100 to above 106 in the next 90 days in order for you just to break even. It's a much better chance than Disney having to go all the way up to 140 in the next 90 days. So we can go back to the option calculator here, the probability calculator, and let's put in change the numbers here, 106, let's see what our probabilities are, 106, and we want to know what are the chances of Disney moving that far in the next 90 days. Now, it, there's a 65% chance that Disney will stay below 106. Conversely, there's about a 35% chance that Disney will get above 106. So you got a much better probability. Now you're looking at 35% chance of Disney moving above 106 versus your 1% chance of it moving above 140. So by picking a different strike price that has a higher probability of letting the stock move that far, you're gonna have a better chance of making a profit. Sure, it's gonna cost you $600 versus $6. I know that's 540, and, um, $594 more expensive. But you know when you buy those cheapy options, cheapy options, you get what you pay for, okay? What you're by paying more money, you're increasing your probability that the stock can make that move in the time allotted. Sure, it's going to cost you more, but you're going to make profits more often. All right. So number two is picking the correct strike price. Number one was going with the trend. Let's go back to our cheat sheet here and talk about um, you know what what the next uh, what the next thing is on the list. Okay. So number three buying too little time. Most people think they know where the stock's going to go very quickly. They have a hunch, hey, I think in the next two weeks, Disney's going to jump up to $140. Telling you, you're going to be wrong more times than you're going to be right when you think you know where the stock is going to move to. In options trading, it's very important to understand that you have to give yourself more time to be right. You know how crazy the stock market is. You know how it moves up and down. It doesn't go up in a straight line for long. It has ups and downs. So how do you know Disney is going to move that far in the time allotted? Do yourself a favor. Go out further in time and give yourself more of a chance to be right. Because Disney could flatline for a little. It could go down for a little before it starts to make that next move. Now we look at Pepsi. Let's go back to the chart and look at Pepsi for a second. 
okay? Um, where's my chart of Pepsi here? Here's the chart of Pepsi. Now you can see Pepsi's going up, but then it has these dips, right? Before it starts to move up again, and it has another dip before it starts to move up again. So if you're buying Disney here, if you're buying call options here that expire in two weeks or a month, you're going to lose because Disney's on the downtrend. I mean, Pepsi's on the downtrend right here. So, but if you bought an option that had three months to expiration, you'd be able to, you know, you'd be able to weather the, this move downwards out and then it would have a, a nice reversal back up. So your, your call option would lose money here, but then it would regain value here and it would fall again here and regain value here. So you want to give yourself more time to be right. Go out three to six months in time instead of two weeks. The market's not going to cooperate with you uh, in that short period of time unless you have some kind of you know, illegal inside information. For most of us, we're going to be wrong more than we're right. So give yourself more time for the stock to keep moving up. Now, remember, if you choose a stock that's in an uptrend, more likely it's going to stay in that uptrend within these you know, down moves. So give yourself more time. Let's go back to the option chain here. So the the 90 days is okay. Maybe that's enough time. If you were looking at something like the um, you know the the May 19th that expires in 27 days, or let's go to the the May 5th options expires in 13 days. You think I know I know this stock's going to move in the next 13 days, and you end up buying you know a cheap option that costs five dollars and the stock doesn't move. And then if you, you know, move forward, if you had the foresight to see forward, say, oh, if I had given myself three months in this option contract, I would have made money because the stock actually made the move that I needed, but it took three months for it to make that move. So give yourself more time. If we're looking at Disney here again, and let's see, let's go to the, the 100 calls. Now the 100 calls for this May uh, is $180, $180 it'll cost you. So $180. And you don't know if this is going to go up in the next two weeks. So you're really taking a gamble here. But if you go back to the Julys, those 100 calls, like I said, cost $600. So the more time you give, the more the option's going to cost. So you have to, once again, weigh out. How much time do I want to give versus how much money am I willing to spend? The longer the expiration, the more money you'll have to pay. But in the long run, this, if you're sure that the stock's in an uptrend and it's going to keep going in that uptrend, give yourself more time to be right. Yes, the option will cost more, but more likely than not, it's going to perform for you in the longer run. So give yourself more time. All right. So let's go back to the cheat sheet here. Let's look at the last, the last one here, number four not taking profits along the way. I see this time and time again with you know new option traders. They come to me, we do our, our coaching sessions. They say, you know what, I was, you know, the stock made the right move. I, I was I was lucky enough to catch it right when it was going higher and my call options had all this profits built up. Then all of a sudden the stock starts to go down and my call option profits start to slip away. And I end up having an, op an option that expires worthless, even though I had all this profit built up. So the, you know, the, the way to rectify that is if you have profits built up, man, you got to take those profits when they, when they're there for you. You know, when you trade option contracts, you don't have to hold it all the way to expiration. You can get out of that option anytime you want. You buy it today, you have profits, you can sell it tomorrow, even though the expiration date's three months in the future. You don't have to hold an option to expiration. The rule here is that if you have a call option that you've bought and you've already got 50% profits built up or even 100% profits built up, you got to take the money and run because you never know when the market's going to give that, take that money away from you. All right, so if you're trading you know, two contracts and you've made 100%, on those two contracts, sell at least one of them, okay? That'll take all your investment out of the trade and now you're just playing with the house's money. And if the and if it keeps going up, then you got that one other call option left that could have unlimited profit potential. But if it if it if it craps out on you and that second option expires worth worthless, at least you've taken money off the table and you've taken back your initial investment. 
So you're, you'll be playing with the house's money. But just remember, you got profits built up. Don't think that they're going to keep growing and go to unlimited. Take the money and run. You know, take some money off the table. I've seen it time and time again. The market will go against you at some point, and those call options will go down in value. So take the profits and run. All right, so there you go. There's your four mistakes that you're probably making if you're not having any success buying call options. Trade with the trend. Choose a, different, choose a different strike price, give yourself an extra time, longer expiration date, and take some profits along the way. There is your four right there. All right, I hope this is helpful. Let's go to our website real quick, smartoptionseller.com. And um, we wanna take a look at, you know, we're option sellers at smartoptionseller.com. We mostly focus on selling put options. So if you want to be a put option seller and you want to learn a little bit more about it, go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Click on the put selling basics, basics link right here. Scroll down. You can read a little bit about it. Put in your name and email address down here at the bottom. We'll send you an email with a link to download the free copy. All right. That's all for me today. I hope this video has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up. You know, leave me a comment. Send me an email. We always answer your emails. And if you want to learn a little bit more about what we do here at the Smart Options Seller, here's our services tab right here. We have two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead next week. I'll see you all back here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.